Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker-puffed wheat and Quaker-puffed rice, the breakfast cereals shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On you huskies! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike and the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Jump, Doc. Here's what's up. Here's the greatest offer ever made by Quaker Puffed Rice and Quaker Puffed Wheat. While it lasts, you get five, yes, five pocket-sized Bugs Bunny comic books. All new, never before published. And they're yours for only 15 cents and one box top from Quaker Puffed Wheat or Rice. Wow, Doc, what an offer. Keep listening. Hear all about it later on. It was fall in the Yukon, and the crisp air gave a hint of the cold and snows that were soon to come. One night, Hazel Crest, owner of a cafe in Selkirk, sat in her private office going over her accounts. She was a large, buxom woman of middle age. Her efforts to preserve the prettiness that once was hers were evident by the heavy use of cosmetics. Hazel could be sharp with her words and quick with a gun when the need arose. She looked up as someone knocked on the door of the office. Come in. Well, what are you... Hal! Oh, Hal! At last you got here. How's my little brother, Hi, anyway? Hazel, old girl. <laughs> oh. This is Frank Austin. Glad oh. to meet you, ma'am. Glad to meet you, too, Frank. Pull up chairs, both of you. We've got a lot to talk about. <laughs> ah. Well, it took you long enough to get up here. Ah, it's been a long trip, Hazel. I bet it took you long enough, too, when you come up here on the boat from Frisco. Oh, it took plenty long, I can tell you. You mean you left a place like Frisco to come way up here in this rough territory? Oh, I had my reasons, Frank. You see, 22 years ago, I got married in Frisco to an hombre named Harvey Baldwin. He was a quiet type. From a nice family in St. Louis. I was in Colorado then, so I never met him. That's right. Well, we had a son. When the boy was a year old, my husband went broke trying to find gold. We needed money mighty bad. Then what happened? Well, I was offered a job to do a song and dance act in a cafe, so I I took it. Harvey was a proud type. He was plenty sore about it. Uh, He should have been glad you were helping out. Well, he wasn't. I hired an old Indian woman to stay with the baby, and one night I came home and found that Harvey had gone away, taking the boy with him. Gosh. Left a note saying I wasn't fit to be the mother of his son. Never saw either of them since. Well, that, that was tough, Hazel. Oh, I was used to hard knocks in those days. Oh, that hit me plenty hard, believe me. Oh, finally, I gave up looking for Harvey and the boy and took my own name back. Yeah, and Hazel's done all right for herself here. That's right, Hal. Nothing matters now to me but gold. I don't blame you for that, Hazel. Yeah. Hal wrote me that you were quick on the trigger and didn't give a hoot about Long and Frank. That's right. There's a deputy back in Arizona. He took a bullet because he was pushing me too close. Hmm. <laughs> Then you'll do fine for the job I got planned for you in hell. And you'll get well paid for it, too. Good. Now, what's the job, Hazel? Well, a couple of my men held up a prospector near a settlement called Indian Creek, some miles north of here. They uh, 
made the mistake of shooting him, even though I told him to be careful. Uh, that's not good. Yeah, I know. Well, there's a young constable up there. He's fairly new in the Mounties. Name's Jack Harvey. Uh, what about him? Well, he's out to find the killers. Now, uh, I'd like him to have an accident, if you know what I mean. Uh, but there'd be other Mounties to continue the hunt, Hazel. Oh, no, look, look. I got a tip that the constable hasn't notified headquarters yet. He's out to solve the case himself, to get a record. Now, if he has an accident before he does call in any other Mounties... Oh, but they'll investigate if anything happens yeah, to him. I know. That's why it has to look like an accident. Oh, yeah, but how are we going to do it, Hazel? Now, here's a way to do it. Listen. Go ahead. Now, you and Frank ride on up there. You ask around about Eric Atkins. That's the name of the prospector that was shot. Say that your friends are his. Now, people will tell you he's dead. Then go and see the constable. What do we say to him? Well, you ask him if it's all right for you to go look around your dead friend's cabin. Now, he's sure to say he can. Then what? What can we do out there? Well, just before you get to the cabin, there's a high, narrow gorge with a bridge made of rope and planks, heavy enough to hold a man on a horse. Now, you cut the ropes almost through. And then one of you go back to the constable and tell him the other is at the cabin and has found something the constable ought to see. Now, the one who goes to town can make an excuse to stay there. The constable will ride out there, start across the bridge, and be hurled to the rocks below. And when he's found, it'll be called an accident. Mm, might work at that. Oh, it will, if you play your cards right. Now, <laughs> go on out into the cafe and get yourselves a good meal. After that, you can start for Indian Creek. You can have that accident happen tomorrow afternoon. The following morning, one of Hazel's men entered her office hurriedly. Well, what do you want, Nick? Hazel, I just found out Sergeant Preston's in town. Got in this morning from Whitehorse, and he's on his way north. He'll be riding through Indian Creek today. Oh, Al and Frank don't know anything about Preston and that dog of his. They try to pull their job while he's there. It'd be just too bad. Yeah, I know. What are you going to do? When do you think he'll be leaving? I hear he's leaving right away. There's no chance for one of us to get there ahead of him. Oh. <laughs> you go ask Sergeant Preston if I can ride to Indian Creek with him. I'll be ready in ten minutes. All right. I'll go ask him right away. As they rode out of town and hit the trail toward Indian Creek... Sergeant Preston held his horse to a leisurely pace as King ran alongside. He knew a great deal about Hazel Crest, and he had often had the suspicion that she was responsible indirectly for some of the lawlessness around Selkirk. But so far, there had never been any proof. He noticed now that Hazel was tense and seemingly worried about something. Finally, she spoke impatiently. Oh, look, Sergeant, can't we ride a little faster? And moseying along like this is kind of foolish when you got a definite place to head for. Relax, Miss Crest. We'll get there before supper time. There's no use wearing out our horses. Oh, I'm in a hurry to get there. Don't forget I have to come back. I thought of that. Won't you feel nervous coming back alone, Miss Crest? Oh, look, how about calling me Hazel and be done with it? All right, Hazel. But you haven't answered my question. Well, I... Maybe I'll find someone there to ride back with. You mean one of your men's over there on some sort of business? Oh, what gave you that idea? Nothing. Nothing at all. Just a thought. Is there any reason why you couldn't send someone there on business? Oh, no, but... Oh, doggone it, you Mounties are always so suspicious. Have I reason to be? Uh, what gave you that idea? You asked that question before. Then stop trying to get me rattled. Just because I want to hurry, you go asking a lot of crazy questions. Maybe I could ask some. Go ahead. Well, why are you riding to Indian Creek? If you were heading for Dawson City, you'd take the boat. For one thing, I want to see how the new constable's getting along. My young friend, Jack Harvey. Oh. You have to go around playing nursemaid all the rookie? No, not at all. But I have a special interest in Jack. I knew his father and was with him when he died a year ago. I got Jack into the Northwest Mounted Police. In fact, I received a telegram from Jack asking me to come by to help him on his first murder case. Oh, a murder case, eh? Yes, he's anxious to get it solved before he goes on leave to San Francisco. What's he want to go there for? Just before his father died, he told Jack and me that Jack's mother was alive as far as he knew. 
You see, he'd taken Jack as a baby and deserted Jack's mother. Jack wants to find her. You, you mean the hombre ran out on Mrs. Harvey and took Jack with him, huh? That's right. It happened 20 years ago. 20 years ago, he said. Holy smoke, that's just when... I mean, that, that was tough. We learned that Jack's father had changed his name so he couldn't be located. You... You mean the constable's father lit out from Frisco, taken the baby with him, and changed his name? Yes, that's what I just told you. Why are you so interested, Hazel? What was the mother's name, her maiden name? We didn't find that out, but Jack's real name's Baldwin. His father's name was Harvey Baldwin. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Jump, Doc. You've seen him in the movies. You've heard him on the radio, and now... Here they are, fellas and girls. They're just off the presses. Your brand new Bugs Bunny pocket-sized comic book. Yes, here's your chance to get five. Not one, not two, not three, not four, but five Bugs Bunny comic books. And best news of all, they're yours for only 15 cents and one bucks top from delicious Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. These books are brand new. All are stories you've never seen or read before. Every story is complete. And they're all in full color. Each book is 32 pages thick. A whole set of five Bugs Bunny comic books has 160 pages. Packed to the covers with adventures, mystery, thrills, laughs, excitement. Wow, Doc, what an offer. Take a look at this one. Bugs Bunny fights the man from Mars for a riot of laughs. It's out of this world. Bugs is at the mercy of a spy from Mars and his deadly ray gun. But look what happens when Bugs gets the spy from Mars into a bubblegum factory. Imagine who gets stuck. It's a triumph of brains over brawn. Don't miss this fun fact story. Or the other Bugs Bunny comic books. Bugs Bunny finds Atlantan's lamp. Bugs Bunny and the Haunted Cave. Bugs Bunny outwits the smugglers. Bugs Bunny aboard the Mystery Submarine. And many more. Yes, we'll send you five. Five different comic books. And we'll also let you know how easy it is to get ten more. You can't buy these handy pocket-sized Bugs Bunny comic books anywhere else. They are exclusive. Offered only by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The delicious, crisp, nourishing breakfast cereals shot from guns. Be sure to send for yours right away. First come, first serve. Just go to your grocer. Get a package of Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Then cut off the top of the package. Write your name and address on it and send it along with 15 cents, only 15 cents, to Bugs Bunny, Chicago 77, Illinois. We'll rush you a complete set of five Bugs Bunny comic books. Remember, they're all new all different. Look, Doc, you better hurry. Yes, as Bugs Bunny says, hurry, don't miss out. Send only 15 cents, your name and address, and one box top from a package of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Mail to Bugs Bunny, Chicago 77, Illinois. Get that address. Bugs Bunny, Chicago 77, Illinois. Now to continue our story. Hazel wondered if Sergeant Preston suspected her plot against the constable, and she waited tensely as he related Jack's background. But the totally unexpected climax had come like a bombshell when Sergeant Preston had said... But Jack's real name's Baldwin. His father's name was Harvey Baldwin. Harvey? Harvey Baldwin? No. Why do you say that, whoa, Hazel? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, Buggy. I thought you were in a hurry. Why are you stopping? For a brief moment, Hazel didn't answer. She turned her head away and stared across the desolate countryside, fearful that Sergeant Preston might see the emotion that gripped her as she realized she had planned a trap to kill her own son. Instantly quelling the panic that welled inside her, she forced a strange smile to her lips. Then, looking straight at the Mountie, she shrugged and spoke. Took me by surprise when you mentioned that Harvey Baldwin, that's all. I met an hombre by that name once. 
couldn't have been the same one, though, since the one you're talking about called himself something else. Oh, well, your dog's the one that's impatient to go now. Uh, let's get moving. I'm still anxious to make faster time. How about it? Maybe it is a good idea to hurry a bit. Let's go. Come on, Buggy. Yeah. Meantime, Hal and Frank arrived at Indian Creek and went to the constable's office, pretending to look for their friend, Eric Atkins. They expressed surprise and anger upon hearing he'd been murdered. Frank acted his part well, and they got permission to visit the cabin. Following the constable's directions, Hal and Frank rode the trail that led to the bridge. When they reached the bridge, they dismounted and walked to the edge of the gorge. Hey, you can see the cabin from here. Just across the gorge. Yeah. Man, alive, that gorge is sure deep. Look down there. I'm glad it's that constable and not me that's going to end up down there. Yeah, we better get busy with our knives on the ropes of the bridge here. Got to figure it just right. So the weight of the constable and his horse will make the rope snap. Now, after we get things set, you better find a good hiding place nearby. You can watch and make sure he has that accident we're planning for. I'll be waiting back there behind those boulders. You go back to town and tell them we found something important out here at the cabin. I'll meet you at the cafe in town later. Now, let's get busy on those ropes. Right. Frank returned to town and told the constable they'd discovered some clues that he should investigate. He said his friend was at the cabin and that he'd wait in town to get supplies. The constable decided he'd better go to the cabin immediately. Ten minutes after the constable left town, Sergeant Preston with King and Hazel Crest reached Indian Creek. As Hazel waited, Preston entered the constable's office. Oh, Jack's not here. The Mountie walked to the chair behind the desk, followed by King. Reaching out, Preston patted Jack's chair, then spoke to the big husky. Here, fella. Find him, King. Find him. Come on. Is he... Is, is he gone? I mean, isn't he there? No, but King will find him for me. Huh? Looks as though Jack left by the trail at this end of town. Once more, Sergeant Preston glanced sharply at Hazel. He noticed that the woman sat tense, and that her hands shook as she held the reins. Maybe Jack picked up the killer's trail. I'd better hurry and catch up with him. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you better. I, I'm going on to the cafe. Get up there. Get up. Get up. Something tells me the quicker I find Jack, the better. Steady, Blackie. Find him, King. Come on, Blackie. Hazel found Frank and told him about Preston. And then, riding at breakneck speed, Hazel and Frank took a branch trail shortcut that would bring them to the cabin side of the gorge. Finally, they reached the clearing where the cabin stood. Ho, 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 there. Ho, ho, ho. Hey, the Bonnies haven't shown up yet. We'll yell to hell and tell them to clear out. Then we'll get out of here. We haven't got any time to lose, Hazel. It isn't hell I'm worried about now. I gotta warn the constable not to cross that bridge. What? Are you crazy? If you do that, he'll know we planned a trap. And him and that other money will get us for attempted murder. I know what I'm doing. I hear hoofbeats coming up the trail across the gorge right now. Must be the constable. This gun says you keep quiet, understand? Oh, wait a minute, Frank. Shut up! Ride behind that big wood pile over there. Get going. Oh, guess you got the upper hand. Get up. Get up. Get up there. Come on. Get up. Get up. Whoa, oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh. whoa. We can just see over the top of the wood pile. We can watch for him to come around that bend and ride onto the bridge. It's coming around the bend over there now. He's stopping about a hundred feet back from the bridge. Once more, panic welled up inside Hazel. She knew she had to act fast if she were to keep Jack from riding to his death. She held a short, heavy riding crop in her hand. And as Frank momentarily relaxed his vigilance, Hazel moved quickly. She raised the riding crop, and putting all her weight behind the blow, struck Frank squarely across the back of the neck. As Frank fell from his horse, completely stunned by the paralyzing blow, Hazel urged her horse forward. I'll ride to this end of the bridge and warn Jack not to cross. Get up there. Get up. Meantime, Jack rounded the bend and came within sight of the bridge and the cabin beyond. As the young constable started forward slowly toward the bridge, he was startled to see a woman ride into view and stop at the other end. At the same time, she shouted a warning. Stay where you are! Ho, ho, ho! Don't come on to the bridge! Stay where you are! Ah, there's something strange here. That woman is threatening me. I'd better find out what's what. 
I have a gun and I'm coming over. Get up there. Come on. Though Jack had misunderstood and had taken Hazel's warning as a threat, someone else heard the cry of warning and immediately understood. Sergeant Preston with King had come around the bend behind Jack. <laughs> Sergeant Preston saw Jack spur his horse forward toward the fatal bridge, and a flash of intuition told him why Hazel called the warning. Preston spoke sharply to King. Stop him, fellow! Stop him! <laughs> the intelligent dog sprang into action and sped after the constable like a streak of lightning. Meantime, Hazel saw with rising horror that Jack misunderstood and intended to cross. She decided there was only one way. I won't let him get killed. I won't. Get up there. Across the gorge, King reached Jack's horse about 20 feet from the bridge, jumping and snapping furiously. The great dog caused the horse to swing to one side, rearing to a stop. Oh, Buggy, what up? Sergeant Preston. That woman shall be killed. Hazel, go back. But his shout came too late. Hazel was on the bridge. As the structure began to sag, the two Mounties watched helplessly. Then they saw a strange thing happen. The stricken look faded from the woman's face, giving way to a smile of relief as she gazed straight at Jack. Then the bridge gave way with a resounding crash. For a moment, the two men stood staring into the gorge. Then Jack spoke shakily. She wasn't afraid. She smiled at us as the bridge fell. She did it to save you from a trap, Jack. What? She didn't realize King had already turned you from the bridge. Oh, I don't understand, Don't Sergeant. think about it now. Wait here. Steady, Blanky. I'll go down into the gorge and see if she's dead. Oh, I guess there's not much doubt about that. Easy, boy. Call me if you need me, Sergeant. As the two men walked to the edge of the gorge and stood momentarily staring downward... Hal, behind the big boulders, realized that things had gone wrong. This is my chance to gun them both. He raised his gun and took careful aim, but he had forgotten about the dog. Just after the crash, King had sniffed the air, and catching a strange scent coming from the direction of the boulders, had quietly gone to investigate. As the great dog came around the boulders, he saw the gun in Hal's hand aimed at the Mounties. King had learned that a gun meant death, and without hesitation, he sprang forward. Get away! He had a gun. He was going to shoot us in the back. Yes, I know. He's one of the men who got me to come here. The other one stayed in town. They planned to trap you, Jack. I'll tie him up, and I'll go see about the woman. A short time later, Sergeant Preston with King stood beside Hazel down in the gorge. To Preston's amazement, she was still alive. And though he could tell she was failing fast, he tried to comfort her by giving what first aid he could and by saying she'd be taken to a doctor. No... I know it's no use. I'm done for, I know. Hazel, I have an idea why you did it. You were willing to sacrifice your life for Jack. You, you guessed. Yes. He's really your son, Jack Baldwin, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, Jack's my son. Sergeant... Take I, it easy, Hazel. I must be sure. Sure, he never knows... If you think that's best. Yeah, yeah, it is best. Promise me you won't tell him. All right, Hazel, I promise. He'd be proud of you. Oh, I'm glad to hear you say that, Sergeant. Very glad. The other man you want is over near the wood pile. Tried to stop me from warning Jack, and I knocked him off his horse. Noticed his head hit a rock. Should be out cold for some time. We'll get him, Hazel. The killers Jack is hunting for. They're in the town of 79, just across the border of the Yukon River. Names are Benson and Findlay. Thank you, Hazel. Jack can go get them and bring them back. I'll get him to come help me get you out of here. Oh, no, it's too late. I'm tired, Sergeant. Won't last long. Take, take care of Jack, my son. Don't worry about that. I knew what to expect when I made my decision to cross. Yes, Hazel. 
always remember me as Hazel Crest. Please never even think I had another name. All right. Jack's coming down. He mustn't know. Mustn't know. How is she, Sergeant? Is she going to be all right? Oh. Hello, Sergeant. I'm glad you're safe. Why did you do it, ma'am? I'll never forget... Jack and I shall always remember <laughs> Hazel Crest, won't we, Jack? Oh, we sure will, ma'am. Always. Oh, that's good. I'm satisfied. I... Hey, she's fainted. No, Jack. Hazel Crest is gone. She knew your mother, Jack, and... What I know now, your mother's dead. I see. Huh. Well, Sergeant, Hazel Crest has done a great deal for me. She gave her life to save mine. Yes. And she solved the murder case for you. I'll tell you about it later. She's vindicated herself for any wrong she may have done in her life. I'm sure we can say that because of her, the case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Friday's adventure. What a ride of laughs, what excitement, what spine-tingling thrills in the five Bugs Bunny comic books we have for you. Remember, they're offered only by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, while supplies last. Not one, not four, but five Bugs Bunny comic books for only 15 cents and one box top from Quaker Puff Wheat or Quaker Puff Rice. Each book is 32 pages thick, so with five of them, you get 160 pages crammed with action. Each book is a complete story, and they're all stories you've never seen nor read before. Here are just a few. Bugs Bunny Lion Tamer, Bugs Bunny Meets the Dwarf Ghost, Bugs Bunny Lost in the Frozen North, Bugs Bunny Outwits the Smugglers, Bugs Bunny Captured by Cannibals. And all these swell comic books are just off the presses. We'll send you five different books, and we'll send you full information on how easy it is to get ten more. Send for yours today. Send only 15 cents. That's all. Just 15 cents, your name and address, and one box top from a package of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Address your letter to Bugs Bunny, Chicago 77, Illinois. I'll repeat that. Send to Bugs Bunny... Chicago 77, Illinois. And as Bugs Bunny says... Look, Doc, you better hurry. Listen Friday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of rescue in the forest. When King and I were on our regular patrol, I learned that a young friend of ours named Peter Hudson had run away from home because he was afraid of his father's dogs. King followed Peter's trail, and we saw the boy on a ledge beside a stream. But our road ahead was blocked by a huge wolf. Then King dashed forward in a terrifying battle to the death. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Friday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from gun. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs>